Yo, 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 checking in again. Another day, another message. Let's have a little meeting with some of the young brothers I've been working with um, for a number of years in the community. So I thought I'd do a little message to kind of make people think, talk, discuss. And more so for the little youths that are out there that kind of look up to certain men in the ends. And the conversation was really about just talking about life. We were talking about being on the road and and some of them caught up in like mad little beefs and postcode foolishness and all that little madness and whatnot. And the question that I kind of put out to them is that I said that basically that I've, I've traveled so many different countries. I've been Africa, I've been Asia, and I've been different parts of Europe and whatnot. And I said to them, like, wouldn't you want to like go to Africa and experience life differently? And one of them kind of said something significant. And they said, why would I want to leave Huckley? And this is where I was born and bred and this is all I know. And, and this is where I'm going to end up and this is where I'm possibly going to dead. And even though everyone was laughing and joking, it was kind of deep car. The reality is that enough of our youths that, that live in the hood is that enough of their mindset, enough of their minds are in the postcode, they're trapped in the postcode, they don't know outside of their postcode, they don't understand or know anything outside of their circumference. And everybody knows me, I'm a, I'm a defender for young people. Anywhere, I don't care what postcode it is, everyone knows I'll defend young people, whether it's, in, whether it's for the police, whether, whether it's in court, and whether, whatever situation young people are in, know that I'll defend young people. But I also that I, I defend young people, I also teach young people. Now, the question that I always ask these young brothers, and the question I was asking these young brothers is, at what point in your life do you want something different? Carl was working with one you um, come out of um, prison, we helped him with his references, helped him, tried to get him back on track, got him back into training, and got caught up in a situation anyway, standing up in the wrong place, wrong time, with a wrong man that was wanted by the police, got recalled, straight back to pen. Now... Speaking to him through letters, speaking to him on the phone and whatnot. It's a question that I constantly ask young people, even in Houston that I was talking to earlier. At what point do you want something different? Because you say that the road's dead. You say repping's dead. You say standing up with certain man is dead. You say rolling with certain olders because the washed is dead. But at what point do you say to yourself that you want something better? Car, the reality is that there's people like myself and there's other people in the community that are willing to help with, with your education. Some people are willing to help to try and get you back into training and some people are willing to try and help you to, to, to try and support you to the point where you can make positive decisions for yourself to be more independent and whatnot. But most of you guys receive the help to a certain point and then end up in a situation where you, it's almost like you're slapping some of the workers that, that are passionate and do not work for you for free in the face and you're just allowing them to just kind of work for you tirelessly and then you don't give them something back. It's a two-way process. Now, there's an old saying that you can take a camel to the water, but you can't, fast the, you can't force it to drink. And there's enough of you youths that are out there, specifically with this youth, and there's a couple of others that are like that, that you work with them constantly, working with them constantly, and there's no type of change. Now, we know that there's a lack of resources in our community. We know that there's a lack of jobs within our community. We know that there's young people that are that have a poor self-concept, that have no purpose in life, that to the point where they, this is self-hatred to the point where they see another man that looks like them, that they're willing to kill them. A man steps on your trainers, a man bounces you, a man looks at you for too long, you got a problem with you, you want to kill him, you want to move to him. But at what point do you want to make that change? We know racism's within our, we know racism's in our society. Racism is still a problem within our society. Still a problem within our community, the disproportionate numbers of young black males that are within the criminal justice system, the disproportionate numbers of, of young black males that are a uh, 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 section under the Mental Health Act, the disproportionate numbers that, of males that are, that are um, over-medicated, the disproportionate numbers that have killed, been killed within the criminal justice system. We see an ongoing system of racism that takes place within our community and we acknowledge that those things are taking place. So those of us that have that acknowledgement and we know that certain things are taking place in our community, what are we willing to do to make that change? Are we willing to just lie down and allow the system to just keep taking us, kicking off our doors, raiding our yards? Now, the amount of youths in the community in the last few weeks, doors have been raided, gang unit have come into your yard, Doors have been kicked off by the police and whatnot, and had your mum screaming at you. Look at brothers and sisters traumatized. At what point do you say to yourself that you know what you don't want it? 
Now, you heard me make videos before about the YouTube videos and saying certain things on Twitter and saying certain things on Instagram. Now, the situation we know in Instagram is already sticky that to the point where man are doing certain things and saying certain things to now that man are moving you because you're making, you're creating an illusion where you're making people think that you're, you're shutting and you're getting all of this money and the reality is that you're not and a man, man moves to you and then something else happens. At what point do you say to yourself that you want something different? Are you just going to allow down and allow the system to just kind of just mistreat you and, and to kind of just lock you up and send you to the grave? Because this is what happens to one of our youths in the community. And that's just a reality. I'm being realistic now. I'm not one of them people that are going to say, ah, oh, you need to come off the road. You need to stop shutting and you need to stop doing that. Yeah, I don't condone any of that type of behavior. But reality is if I can't produce a job for you right now, the reality is you're still going to be on the road. However, at what point in your life do you say to yourself, you know, what, I want to do something better. I want to utilize the positive people that are willing to work with me for free, willing to work with me and support me in the community for me to move from A to B. At what point do you say to yourself that you want to utilize that, that energy that's going to enable you to get to that point so you're making positive decisions, you're in living an independent life where you ain't worrying about man watching, you ain't worrying about police on your case 24-7, you ain't worrying about gang feds or anybody that's, that's, that's going to be on you just 24-7. At what point do you say to yourself that you want to do something different? God, the reality is right now is that things ain't changing and things are going to get worse. Anybody that understands law, anybody that understands certain changes in legislation and policy and acts that, are, that have been used to target most of our young people. Now, for those of us that don't understand that, speak to people in the community that know there's many, many men in the community, many sisters in the community that, that know these things, that are willing to help and support you, young people, and give you that information. But it's got to be a two-way process. It can't just be a thing where people are just helping and helping and helping. And then you guys are not willing to fight as well. And some might say, you know, it's a confidence issue. Yeah, I understand that as well. Some people have struggled to, to just even write an application form. Because most of our youths can't read and write. Most of the young people and some of the young people that I work with can't read or write. Most of the youths that have the, the most popular name in our community can't read or write. But we acknowledge that and we're willing to support you and get you to that next step. But it has to come to a point where you say to yourself, you know what, I don't want to do this. I don't want to live this life no more. And the reality is, it's baby steps. The reality is that you can't just take a leap. You can't run before you learn to crawl. So you have to take a step. And what's that step going to be? To acknowledge, one, that, you know what, I don't want this situation myself. Two, what do I need to do to, to, to get to that next point? That next point, point could be just something simple as just writing a CV. The second point can be that, you know what, you see them certain man there, I know that, yeah, my bedroom's them, my man them that I've grown up with all my life, but at what point do you say that, you know what, some of that is too much negative energy, that if I start rolling with them certain man constantly, and I'm the one that's been looked at by the police or whatnot, at what point do you say to yourself that, you know what, I need to take a step back? But there's nothing wrong, there's most enough of us that have come from the hood that have grown up with certain man that are doing positive things that still know man. There's so many men that in the community that have, have lived certain lifestyle and changed to the positive. We've worked with people, we know people that have shot men, stabbed men, shot in all kind of certain types of lifestyles and, and, have, and have changed to make that positive step. Why? Because of faith. Why? Because they've got children. Why? Because they've got married. Why? Because they've just thought, you know what, I don't want to live that life no more. There's people that have done that that will be willing to help and support certain men. But you've got to be willing to fight. Because everybody knows that I'm out there and I'm willing to support you. There's not just me. There's enough of us in the community that are willing to, to work with you day in, day out. But it's got to be a two-way process. And you have to ask yourself that question. Like, if you know the road's dead, if you know repping is dead, if you know that standing up with a certain man is dead and, and making money is, is the only way and not educating myself is the only way, at what point do you say to yourself that, you know what, because an educated person is the most dangerous person in society. You can have all the money, you can have all the burners and all the knives all you want, but an educated person is the most dangerous person. Why? Because when a person is educated, you can't take someone's education away from you. You can't take someone's education away from them. You can't. So we have to start asking ourselves that question. Are we just going to allow the system to mistreat us? Or are we going to fight the system? What I mean by fight the system is psychologically, academically, just thinking smart. Are we going to challenge or are we just going to lie down and allow them to keep sending us to prison? Keep allowing them to put tags on our legs, restricting us from going to certain postcodes? Are we going to allow them to just keep sectioning us? 
medicating us, over medicating us, killing us in custody. Are we just going to allow it or are we going to fight or are we going to try and do something different? Now, this message might not be for everybody, that's just the reality. But there might be a youth that watches this, there might be a parent that, that's close with their youth that watches this and thinks, you know what? My man's asked a fundamental question, I'm going to ask myself that question. And there's people out there that are willing to help, willing to support. Because I'm tired of seeing youths going to court, getting sent to life in prison, five years, four years, seeing their mums barling, little brothers and sisters traumatised, man feel that they can't go certain places because they've got me caught up in some dumb beef. Hate going to mental health institutions where you see men that get constantly medicated because they've smoked bud or what they're thinking that they're smoking is bud and it's just sent them mad. Hate going to funerals and seeing beer young brothers distraught young brothers getting put in a grave. But it's a reality and it's a reality we have to deal with. And there's people in the community, parents, practitioners, counsellors, practitioners, whatever you want to call them. There's people that don't understand the reality of our young people, but there are people in the community that do understand the reality. So all I'm saying to those individuals and those youths out there is that at what point do you ask yourself that question that, you know, I want better for my life. I don't want to be on the road no more. I don't want to be standing up with these men no more. I want to do something positive, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what tools I need to do that. There's people that are out there to support you. So anybody that knows me, I'm quick and easy to access. Holler. And I can sign poetry to anyone in the community. The reality is I can't do anything. I'm only one man. But there's people and I know a lot of people from the work that I'm doing. And there's people I know in business. There's people I know that are managers. There's people I know that are youth workers. There's people I know that are social workers. There's people that work in the criminal justice system. That can help and support. If you guys are thinking that, you know what? I want to kind of change certain things. I want to do certain things. I'm in a position right now where I'm at a university. I'm teaching people, enabling people to get educated and whatnot. So the options are there, but... It's on you. It's a two-way process. We're out there. But are you also willing to make that step? It's real action, youth in motion. It's about turning real talk into real action. Peace.